glory be. Hallelujah. I know the tomb is empty because my heart is full. Amen. 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 Here in John chapter 14. Let's get started right away here. Praise the Lord. Amen. And you know, the disciples were uh, getting to come troubled in their heart because Jesus was telling them he had to go home. But he wasn't going to leave them by himself. He said, I'm going to I'm going to give you another comforter. In other words, someone exactly like me. Amen. Amen. He said there in verse 1, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If there was not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And receive you unto myself. That where I am there ye may be also. Whether I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. And how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. If ye, if ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. From henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Praise God. Go over here to verse uh, 12. Verily I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, and that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another comforter, that ye may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it saith him not, neither know of him, but ye know him, for he draw with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. 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 You know, it's, it's a proven fact that a lot of believers are not experiencing the promise of the Spirit of God. We know the Spirit of God makes it possible for us to be born again. That was born flesh of flesh, but that was born in spirit of spirit. But it's sad to say that a lot of believers have not learned how to activate the Spirit, the Spirit of promise. Far too many believers have been in church for years and don't have power over a dirty uh, uh, thing of dishes. They fail time and time again and not experiencing the witness of the Spirit within. The Bible tells us in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, you shall receive power. That word power comes from the word dunamis, the Greek word, which when we get the word dynamite. So this power that we receive in that we receive from the Holy Spirit, it's explosive. Amen. When we apply and activate it, whatever's in the way, it must be destroyed. Mm -hmm. It must be moved to the side. But we must be able to learn how to activate the Spirit. And it's sad that far too many believers are not witnessing, witnessing this power in their life. But we're going to get down to the nitty gritty today. Amen. I know there's many more ways that we can see this but we're just going to concentrate on four, maybe five or six. I don't know. Up to the Spirit. But we need to realize and understand that. See, the word activate means to make something active or operative. Amen? It means to start, move, trigger, turn on, drive, uh, ignite, generate, fuel. It means to move into action. <coughs> Excuse me. How do we activate this Spirit, this promise? First of all, we know we must be born again. We got to be born again. You know, it says in Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes uh, 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 Isaiah, uh, no, Ezekiel 36, 27, I will place my spirit within you, and I will cause you to keep my commandments. Amen? And you shall do them. So this is the whole reason why that God is the one who activates the Spirit. He 
He's the one who initiates salvation. We already understood and now know now that that uh, before there's salvation, there's revelation. Because we had to be revealed that we had to be saved. Amen? Amen. So God is the one who initiates that. What it tells us in John chapter 3. Let's just go over there right quick. John chapter 3. Uh, Nicodemus says, uh, Jesus tells him, you must be born again. Except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. We already uh, determined the kingdom of God is God ruling and reigning in our heart. Amen. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, but that which is born of spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto you, Ye must be born again. So we know, of course, in order for that spirit to be activated, you've got to be born again. If you're not born again, there's no spirit to be activated. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 that God has not given us the spirit of the world. 12. He has not given us the spirit of the world. So now we have a brand new spirit. Amen. And that spirit comes along with power. It comes along with understanding. It comes along with revelation. And it's important that we tap into the spirit because it's the, it's the power within. This power within has to be released. It has to be released. When Jesus told his disciples there in John 14, he says, greater works will you shall do than he, because he has to go to his Father. But there should be some things in our life that we're experiencing, the power of God's Spirit showing us and, and, and bringing us through these hardships that we have in our life. Jesus. And we know by fact that it wasn't on our own accord, but it was something supernatural. And it came from above, and it came from within. And that's the Spirit of God leading and guiding us. John chapter 14, no, John chapter 16 tells us, 13 says, verse 13, When the Holy Spirit comes, when the Comforter comes, He shall lead you and guide you into all truth. He will not speak of Himself. He will speak of those who, the one who sent Him. So this Spirit, this Holy Spirit, His purpose is to lead us and to guide us into all truth. Amen. Now we know this world down here is dark. This world is a lost world. In order for us to get through it, the Spirit has to lead us. He has to take us through the valley of the shadow of death. We're not going to make it without the Spirit. Let me ask you a question. How do we recognize the Spirit in our own life? Is it something that, uh, 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 that we can pinpoint that we know that when the Spirit is uh, activated, do we know when He's actually taking over? Do we know when His presence is there? We gotta know these things. Amen. We gotta know these things. It ain't. It's not by us saying hallelujah, mm -hmm. but it's something. Hallelujah is just a result yes. of the Spirit being present in our life. Yes. Like some folks can say hallelujah and don't even know God. Amen. 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 But it's something that we ought to understand individually, knowing that God is in us. That's so important because if he go prepare a place for, you know, he said, where I am, you will be also. I want him to prepare a place for me. Amen. Amen? Yes. But he said, he tells in that John 13, or 16, he says, if I don't go, the Spirit will not come. So he had to be here. That's why when that you heard in the song, he said, I know the tomb is empty because I know my heart is full. So this is where you get the evidence that he is in you, inside of you. In your heart, in your soul, in your mind, you're thinking about them. Mm -hmm. You're concentrating on them. You're all, you know, the Bible says, uh, uh, blessed are those who mind and stay on the Lord. Mm -hmm. Then you have perfect peace. So a lot of believers walking around here not having peace in their life, man. Mm -hmm. they're, not having, they're still trying to figure things out on their own. It would not work that way. you got to come to a conclusion in your life and realize that your life is no longer belongs to you. It belongs to Him because you've been brought with a price. Oh, Our life belongs to Him now. Yeah. we got to see it that way. Yeah. You know that we die daily. Yeah. We're going to get there in a minute. Praise God. Listen. Mm. So the first thing we know, the order for this spirit to be activated, that we must be born again. Uh, God is the only one who delivers a soul from damnation. Let's understand that. Go to John chapter 6. John chapter 6. You're in John 3 now. Go to John chapter 6. 
And there's something very important here we need to look at. How Jesus talks about, he tells those disciples, he says, I am the bread from heaven. You know, the Bible tells us man don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. And the significance, how important the word is in our life. Without the word, man, we can never really understand none of this. Amen. Seriously. Because who's the word? Christ is the word. Now, he's the only way to the Father, and we got to go through him. So he's the word, so we got to understand how the word plays part in our life, experiencing and be able to activate this spirit, this promise in us that he has given us. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes, amen? He says here in verse, uh, uh, let's start on um, 33. He says here, oh uh, no, let's go from 32. He says, then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven, talking about himself. For the bread of God, for the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven. He's explaining, and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, every, evermore give us this bread. Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Amen? That meaning, that means you don't want nothing but him. See, this is where your attitude has to be. Now, Lord, my shepherd, I shall not want. But so many folks around him want stuff. Well, he's not the shepherd. Do you understand he's a shepherd? When you got him, you shall not want. You know that you should never thirst and you should never hunger because God's going to take care of you. This is kind of lesson that he's talking about. You see? And he yeah. says here, he says, and he that believe on me shall never thirst. 36. But I say unto you, that ye also have seen me and believe not. So he's telling them, y'all see me, but you don't believe. See, it comes down to believing. See, believing means, believe means to accept, to rely on, to trust in. Have we really, really trusted in Christ and what he's done for us? Watch the next verse. This is powerful. He says, all that the Father giveth me shall come to me. And him that cometh to me, I will in no way cast out. You see that? So in other words, that's why I'm saying it's the Father who initiates salvation. He is the one who, could, well, let's keep reading here. For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, and of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should rise it up again at the last day. So let's go down into verse, look at verse 44. No man can come to me except the Father which have sent me, he be drawn. He uh, sent me, draw him. That I will raise him up in the last day. So you notice here, he's telling them that the Lord is the one who chooses. Yes. He is the one who, who initiates salvation. See, everybody don't have faith. Go over to verse 63. Look what he says here, 63. He says, it's the spirit that quickens. It's the spirit that quickens. In other words, it's the spirit that makes alive. All right? The flesh profits nothing. The, listen, the words that I speak unto you, the words that I speak unto you, listen, they are spirit and they are life. You see that? So he's telling us, it's the spirit that quickens. It's the word that gives life. This is why it's so important that, that we be uh, learn, understand that uh, the activation of the Holy Spirit within us, number one, you've got to be born first. Number two, you must go through the Son. We distinguish that in that John 14, 6. Amen. We distinguish that. Number, uh, uh, now we've got to look at number three. You must strengthen your spirit within our spirit must be strengthened from within. Now, the Bible tells us. Now, everything is going to correlate. Look at Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. I felt as though I had to review some of these things because I'm telling you, uh, these are basic things of understanding your walk and understanding how to activate the power within, the spirit within you. Because once you leave here, it has to be activated. 24-7. Thank you, Jesus. This is like a classroom. Glory this is when we come together and we, we get charged up. Amen. 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 What we learn and what the Spirit is speaking to us this very moment, we take it out and we experience this life. Being led by His Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
Being led only by spirit. Because not the spirit of the world. He didn't give us the spirit of the world. Amen. So he says here in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16. Paul is praying for those believers at, uh, uh, at this church. Here. He says that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That you be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. So he's trying to make a point here. He's saying, listen, you have to be strengthened in your inner man. A famous verse we all say almost every other week is Proverbs 20, 27. He said, the spirit, listen, the spirit of man, your spirit, is, somebody said it, is the candle of the Lord. Amen. Searching all the inward parts of the belly. So that tells us that we know the function of a candle. In order for a candle to bring forth light, it has to be lit. So our spirit has to be lit by God. Amen. So in order for it to be lit by God, we've got to put ourselves in a position to be lit. That means we got to allow, we got to allow His Spirit to lead us and guide us. Meaning we got to surrender. We got to get out of our own way. One of our biggest problems is we in our own way. We got to understand these simple things in order to experience this power from within. Because I'm telling you, this power is nothing like you have ever experienced on this planet. I'm a witness. I know He's alive in me. I know it. I don't have to convince anybody. I experience His power each and every day. I mean, those disciples, I mean, we should be confident when he says, I will go away. If I don't go away, the Spirit won't come. So he's with his Father now, the right hand side of the Father. So we now know this is the age of the Holy Spirit. Right now, that's what we're living in right now. This is the age of the Holy Spirit. So I know, I'm confident that when this is all over, he's preparing something for me on the other side. Amen. And he said, don't worry about it, I'm going to come again. I will never leave you or forsake you. I will never abandon you. So what we got to worry about? You see? But see, we were, we talked about last week. What we talked about last week? Don't be anxious for nothing. Amen? Meaning worry. And we described that, that being anxious is the distractions. And we know the distractions come from the enemy. He's always distracting us to look over here and look over there. Amen. But we talked about our eye being single, being focused on him. This is what we and this is and this is the struggle that a lot of us have. Because we, we haven't got out of self. We haven't, we're gonna talk more about it next week. We haven't forgiven ourselves. So many people haven't forgiven yourselves. we you know, that stuff is over what you've done. You know, more next week, but I'm gonna give you a look right now. Stop looking at what you did. You can't go forward if you stay and focus on if your mistake. Yeah, we may all make mistakes, but God is a forgiving God, and He expects us to forgive ourselves. So many things that hinder us from receiving this activation from the Holy Spirit. Listen, there's a couple of things that destroy us, this power being activated. Sin, disobedience. That's the thing that, that, that we know we sin, but we ought to understand and be, uh, have a habit of confessing those sins. You know, uh, right away. Amen. Even when a thought comes. Mm -hmm. Oh, praise God. Mm. Yes, Lord. Another one I want to see what uh, things that, that, that uh, destroy or activate this power is the way you think. Amen. Remember the last week we talked about? Think on things that are just, pure, lovely, honest. A divinity, virtue of every praise. Listen, think on these things. Do you know right now, where you are right now in your life right now? Now watch this. Where you are right now in your life? Watch this. I wrote this down. The way you think now is a result of the kind of life you have now. Oh! That should have went over your head. Where you are right now is the product of how you've been thinking. Because if it has a man think, so is he. In his heart, there he is. That's who you are. So that's why it tells us to renew our mind. Yeah. And it's not just saying this. we got to renew our mind. Yeah. I mean, when thoughts start coming to you, you got to be able to tell those thoughts, stop. Yeah. When we start reminiscing about the mistakes that we made, we gotta say, we got to say it out loud, stop. Yeah. 
I'm not going down that road no more. Seriously. Sometimes you got to talk to yourself. Because you're the, your voice is the one you believe more than anybody else. When you say, when somebody says, let's go over here or let's go over there. But you are determined by saying no or yes. Amen. Well, I don't want to go over there. I don't want that for lunch today. I want this for lunch today. You got to believe, you got to stop believing in yourself. Amen? Praise God. More about that later. Amen. So the way you think is important. These things destroy us. Many more things destroy us from activate. We can grieve the Spirit of God. We can shun the Spirit of God. But it's important that we understand what God is talking about. When that uh, uh, verse, look at 1 Peter. Look at 1 Peter. I want you to look at 1 Peter right quick. You know, y'all know what we're talking about today, right? How to activate this power within you. And see, I'm telling you, uh, I don't know how a lot of folk make it throughout the week if they're not really uh, being nourished by uh, or strengthened by the Spirit of God on a daily basis. I don't know how you make it. I really don't. I mean, so many of us are distracted by things that, you know, don't even play a part in our life. Seriously. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 1, look at verse 23. See that? 23 says, no, 22. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit. That's a lot right there. Mm -hmm. Seeing ye have purified. This is something that we do. Seeing that you have, you have purified your soul, your mind, the way you think, by obeying the truth through the Spirit. That's what we got to do. It ain't just going to happen because we read a verse. Amen? Amen. We, have to, we have to know what this word is saying. How can the Holy Spirit bring anything back to our remembrance if it ain't nothing there? To bring back. God have mercy. Yeah. He said there in John chapter 14, verse 36, when the comforter come, you said, which is the Holy Ghost, he said, Jesus, Jesus is speaking. He said, He will bring things back to your remembrance. Then he says, Whatever I have said unto you. Now we are determined that Jesus is the word. That yes. is the word. So when when we read the word, the word is is is, is speaking to us. Because this word is spirit and this word is life. So when we're in trouble, when we're going through things in our life, how can the Holy Spirit bring anything back if we don't put ourselves in a position to hear from God? He's fishing. He's trying, he's trying to find something. You know. But some people just live it on one verse. <laughs> one or two verses. Amen. Oh, my goodness. Lord have mercy. Mm. So much more we gotta learn and understand things. I'm telling you, every day should be a day of regardless what is going on in the world. Or what is going on in your world. You can just sit back and know that God's got it. That, that is a one that's a wonderful feeling. If things don't seem to work out the way you think they ought to work out, all things gonna work together for good. So why are we worried? Why are we upset and concerned about things? Because we have to know this God for ourselves. We've got to know Him. Not of Him, but know Him. Because He wants to manifest Himself in, all, in every part of our lives. You might not think so, but He wants to be a part of everything you do and the things you experience. When that storm comes, don't look around like, what happened? If you were with God, God would let you know a storm's coming. And when it comes, you can lay down a boat and go to sleep like he did. Amen. Amen. Remember when Jesus was in a storm in the Sea of Galilee? A boat was being tossed to and fro. And they, they were asleep. And they said, Jesus, what, are you all okay? You got to get up, man. We get ready to perish in this storm. He said, oh, you with little faith. We all know faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. See, this, these things are literally, if you think about them, I mean, this is the way that the, the, the Spirit is released by just doing what God is telling us to do. Look at the next verse. 
I'm going to finish reading that thing. Seeing ye purify your souls and bring the truth of the Spirit unto the unfiled love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Here it is. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible by the Word of God, which liveth from the Bible forever. So I can honestly say, I'm, 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 I'm born again. I was born again. I'm in the process of being born again. And eventually, I'll be born again. Totally. What do I mean by that? A lot of folk, they come and say a simple prayer, and they say they're born again, but never come back to the Word of God, never come back to church. Something's wrong. That spirit was never activated. That spirit was never placed there from the get-go, because we said that in the Kings, that's just that's 36, 27. He said, I'm going to place my spirit within you, and I'm going to cause you to do it. I'm going to cause you to keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. So a lot of folk I know walk around and say they're born again, but have no evidence that anything has been activated in their life. No power, no nothing. they just going on what they say. Uh-uh. Somebody ought to see that you've been changed. Amen? Amen? They ought to see that there's been a difference in your life. The way you talk, the way you walk, the attitude, just the way you carry yourself. And it's, it's a constant thing. See, we're not see, we're not born again of corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed by the word, the word of God. So it's a process. It's a process. The more we hear... Oh, Lord have mercy, watch this. Mm, I'm going to stay right here since we're here. Go to 2 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 2. Watch this. He says, Wherefore lay aside all malice and all God and hypocrisy and envy and all evil speaking. Watch this, watch this. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. When a baby is born, they want that milk, man. Don't give them no soda. They don't want no cookie. They want that milk. Amen? Amen. amen. So we born again, amen. This is, our, this is our desire. I want the truth. I want the truth. My life has been transformed. Now in order for that spirit to activate and to show me and to lead me to all, all truth, listen, it has to receive the word of God because the word of God activates the spirit within us so we can become what God wants us to be. And what he called us to be. That's the whole thing. And it's not a mystery. This is not a mystery. This word makes us. This word breaks us. This word heals us. This word sets us free. But we got to put ourselves in a position. So we can be allowed in our life. To show us. What God has in store for us. You know, we've been talking about for the last year or two about Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. Y'all know that. Y'all know it by heart. It says, God has uh, uh, made everything beautiful in this time. He said he has a place eternity. Watch. He placed eternity in the hearts of men and women. Amen. In other words, what is this eternity? It's a sense of purpose. It's a sense of divine purpose. And he goes on to say, he placed it in their heart, in their heart, that nothing under the sun can satisfy but God. So you're not going to find out what your life is all about, why you're here, what your purpose is, if you don't get in a position to allow God to show you why you were here, why you were created, what your purpose is. So many people uh, uh, die. You know, people always say, but you heard this term, why is a fence around the graveyard? Because people are dying to get in. Amen. Amen. And there's so much lost potential. So many people don't reach their potential. They don't reach their potential. But when you plug into the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to be released in, in your everyday life, you'll be, you'll be amazed that God is, you'll see God just taking you along. Listen, He's the author and the finisher of our faith. If He started, He can finish it. If he's talking salvation in you, he can finish it. Oh, praise God. Watch this. Hmm. Are we here? Amen. Listen, praise God. God is good. Is he good? He is good. Amen. Amen. Uh, we want to look at, here's another one we want to look at. We got to feed our spirit. What do we feed our spirit? We got to feed him Christ. Amen. We have to feed him Christ. He has to be fed Christ. The Bible says in John 1.1, 1, 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. 
Verse 14 of John chapter 1. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. We got to understand that man don't live by bread alone. We have to feed our spirit the Word of God. We have to. Amen. Because once we do that, we're feeding. He says, remember, I'm going to read it again. Because y'all, so many, we, we forget so fast that John 6, 63. So, we forget so fast, John 6, 63, where he says here, he says, uh, praise God, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, 6, 63. He says, it's the spirit that quickens. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak unto you, See, you want to be fed, Christ? Feed the word of your spirit. That's what he's saying there. Prophet nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. And they are life. See, speak to me, Jesus. Everybody else speaking to you. Everybody else getting, they got nothing but lies. Gossip. Something you don't want to hear. Let God speak life to you. Amen. Thank you. Seriously. We got to put ourselves in a position so He can speak this life. I mean, turn on the TV. Watch how much stuff you come across that's depressing, especially from 4:30 to 6:30. The news. <laughs> I mean, they got CNN. Uh, MB, uh, BC, all, all these things that just bring bad news all over the world. And some of us just sit there before coffee and say, mm -mm. <laughs> what is going on? Get out of that world. It's not going to change. That world is not going to change. You know, the question was asked me the other day, can believers, can believers be blinded? I, I, I believe they can. Yep. They can be blinded. Because the Bible tells us in first that first Timothy four tells us that um, and the spirits the spirit is telling us, the Holy Spirit is saying speaking expressly, in the last days, which is right now, some shall depart from the faith. So that means somehow we've been blinded, uh, just like the world, just like the unregenerate man, a un a saved person has been blinded. Mm -hmm. When the Bible tells us in Second Corinthians chapter four, verse four, it tells us it says that we're blinded by the God of this world mm -hmm. to them that believe not. So if we're not believing, and then we're, and we're believers. We're supposed to be believers if we're not believing this. Amen. In order for us to believe it, we have to put something has to be in our, in our like to make a choice, to make a decision in your life, you got to have at least two things to choose from. Amen? Amen. Right or wrong, right? You gotta, you gotta have a choice. So, in order for us to believe the Lord, we gotta be able to have a choice. Now, the world is constantly giving us a choice, which is a lie. But we don't put ourselves in a position to believe this word. Amen? We cannot make the proper choice on a daily basis. Amen? Amen. Remember, I said, I'll say it back again. The, the way you've been thinking up to this point in your life determines what kind of life you have right now. Remember we said that earlier? Yes. See, people ain't thinking right, man. They ain't thinking right because they let everything else come in. Mm -hmm. yeah. They hear all, all of they hear. You pick it up, static. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. You know, who, who wants to sit there and listen to static? <laughs> I mean, you're going to try to get in a position to get to, get to come clear, right? I mean, you'd be crazy to sit there and just hear static. I can't really hear it. You've got to put yourself, you got to either turn or do whatever to get to, get to come in clear, amen? amen? This is what we're talking about. How are uh, we? The Bible tells us, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. There's something we have to do. The salvation is there. It's already there inside of us. But we gotta, we, we got to work it out, man. We got to allow it to come out and to and, and be released and to lead us and to guide us. So we have to feed our spirit Christ. We have to feed our spirit Christ. We have to. I mean, man don't live by bread alone. Ain't none of us in there missing no meal. None of us. 
Man, if it's a maturity, we stop everything, don't we? Come on. Somebody I talk to you, I hear what you're saying, man. I'm thinking about what I have for lunch, man. Okay, what you say? All right, you let the menu. Come on now. What about the Word of God? This is how we live. My words are spirit, they are life. I need this word in me. I need it in me. I mean, this is the attitude we ought to have. This, this, is, this is our power. There's only two weapons that are tangible when it comes to, we know the Bible belongs to the Lord, but it's only two weapons that we use on this planet that are tangible. That's the Word of God and that's prayer. He said, above all, take the, the, take the sword, which is the Word of God, and then prayer. Amen? These are two powerful tools that we have at our disposal. The Word of God and prayer. Amen? Amen. We got to we, we understand that this is what we need. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Watch this. I ain't just saying this stuff, y'all. No. Come on, man. <laughs> Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. Amen? Mm -hmm. Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Revelation 12, chapter, uh, uh, Revelation chapter 12, verse, uh, let's see here, verse 10. Let's start from verse 9. Revelation 12, 9. You there? Amen. All right, y'all ready to go? And the great dragon was cast out, and that old serpent called the devil... And Satan was deceived the whole world. He was cast into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. They caused a havoc, ain't they? You see that? And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come the salvation, the strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. That's all he's doing. Accusing us. Look at them. They ain't reading. Look at them. They ain't worth nothing. But look at here. Look at verse 11. And they overcame. They, they, those who feed their spirit, those who believe in God, those who trust God. And they overcame him. Who? The enemy. By the blood of the Lamb. And by the word, by the word of their testimony. Amen. Amen. And they loved not their lives unto death. So that's how you overcome. By the word. Amen. The Word brought me through. The Word delivered me. The Word set me free. If it wasn't for Jesus, where would I be? Amen. You see? That's how you overcome. Amen? Are we here? Amen. Let's look at another point here. I think that's interesting here. Another key point. Um, talked about you got to be born again, right? You've got to go through Christ. Amen. We've got to feed our spirit. Here's another fourth thing. There's many more, but these are the ones I just chose today. Go to John chapter 7. John chapter 7. One of the things that we have to do, y'all, in order for this spirit to be activated and be released in our life, amen, we got to glorify him, man. We got to glorify him. Seriously. Look at John 7, 37. John 7, 37 says, In the last day of that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Amen. He that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. One of the, the, the metaphors of when it uses the word water in the Bible, it's talking about the word of God. Being washed, being washed in the word. So he said, He that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow. Out of your see, belly represents your heart, your soul, your mind. Amen. Your spirit. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. We all determine the Word of God is living. <laughs> Amen. So this is going to flow when you believe. See, believe, it comes down to believing. You see? But do, I, do I believe that God is who He say He is? Do I believe that He's alive in me? That's why I played that song. Do you believe that He's alive? I believe that He is. Because some of the things I experienced or some of the things that He has shown me that was beyond my comprehension and my own thoughts and mind, there's no way I would have understood and seen these things if it weren't for God giving me a heads up. Yeah. Amen. When the, the wise men uh, went and, and uh, 
They said, we they found the star to go to Jesus. And when they found it, they gave him myrrh, frank, uh, gold was for a king, and they gave him uh, uh, frankincense, and they gave him myrrh. Myrrh represents a king, uh, someone who's going to die. So when they brought those gifts to Jesus, amen, uh, when they was on their way back, because here I tell them, when you, go, when you find them, bring them back to me. But they were warned by an angel, by the Spirit of God, said, look, I want you to go another way. Don't, even, don't go back that way. Don't go tell her nothing because he wants to kill them. If they, if they wasn't led by God, be amen, God. they would have went back and told them. Yeah, you see? Yeah. But see, have you been in a situation where God just changed your whole course yeah. of you was going to go do something, and he said, don't do it, and it was so pressing on you that you couldn't do it. That's the Holy Spirit. That's when you know he's active in your life. Yeah. Because if you try to go back and do some of the things you used to do, Look all the things that's coming to your mind. We don't play that no more. We don't act that way no more. What do you think that is? It ain't the devil. <laughs> the devil be saying, come on, hurry up. Let's go destroy ourselves. <laughs> Amen? Amen? But not God. See, this is what we got to pay attention. You should be have some evidence that God is in your life. That will take away all, that will drop down all that fear, man. That take all that worry away from you. That knowing that God got this. I mean, whatever we're confronted with, I, I, I thank God for the peace that passes all my understanding. I don't know how He's gonna do it, but I know He's gonna do something because He loved me, and I love Him. John 14, 21, he says, if those who obey me, I'm going to manifest myself unto them. In other words, I'm going to show up and show out. I'm going to let you know that you are my child. you my child. You belong to me. And nothing's going to pluck you out of my hand. I, 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 I saved you. I delivered you. And you ain't got to worry about anything. This is where you got to fail, man. This is where you got to think. You're not going to make it out here. Being scared and being worried about all this and all that. And come on now, we gotta we gotta stand up and fight, man. The Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. All we gotta do is believe the word of God, hear the word of God, and believe it, and take it in, and soak on it and meditate on this thing, and then you make your way prosperous, and then you have great success. Meditate day and night, Joshua chapter one, verse eight. That's what we gotta do. You wanna you wanna experience this power, I'm telling you. I'm trying to, I'm trying to. Be cool here. Listen, look at the next verse. We got to get to the verse 39, John 7. We read 38. He that believed on me, as the scripture said, out of his blood shall so rivers of living water. Look at 39. But this spoke he of the Spirit, which they that believed on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. And, and, and I had to write down glorified. I had to define it. Glorified means to honor as a divine power. It means to obey. It means to praise. It means to boast. My God and my Lord. Jesus is Lord. What a mighty God I serve. Amen? I mean, you know, it's like you, you, you take yourself out of yourself. You see? And you, you, it's, it's like a great exchange. You, you, you take Christ's life and he takes your life. Because when he took our life, we were headed for hell. Amen. So he made a great exchange. He died for our sins. Amen? Amen? He died for our sins. And now we have life. We have his life. That's why he said, you've been brought with a price. And you no longer belong to yourself. Once we see ourselves in that light, things will become a whole lot easier. To become a whole lot easier. We're always looking at the, the storm, the problem. Not the problem solver, but the, but the problem. Oh, it's getting closer. We're getting engulfed with these things in our life. This too shall pass. How many times you've been through something in your life and it's, now it's over with? That's one of the benefits of having a journal. You know, I have a journal. I haven't been writing it, but, but when I first got delivered. I was writing that thing all the time and I, I look back occasionally and I can see I was in a situation I was always write down how I was mentally and how, how I dealt with it. And I, I sensed a, uh, as I wrote these things, it was a lot of fear that I was experiencing because I didn't understand. I was, I was young 
in the Word. But it helps me to really see that, okay, I've experienced these things, but every one of them, God delivered me from them all. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Every one. So that, that journal became, became my life. It became my life. We know the Word of God is our life. But it came that it became my, my life because I could see, I know what he did with Daniel's and the Daniel and the lions then. And what he done with the woman with the issue of blood. But what has he done in my life? Can I have do I have any record of what he's done? Yes, yeah, a lot of us forget how blessed we are and how God has delivered us from so many things. Amen. See, you want to write, you want to you want to record some of these things. Because somebody, when you're going, might could come across and see how, okay, mom and dad was always talking about this Jesus. But then they come across and they read your journal. Oh, my goodness. Mom and dad were experiencing that. But here, God delivered them. God set them free. God made a way of escape. Amen? Amen. This is something that is personal, man. I mean, I love where I am with God right now. I mean, the only thing that that hinders me is this body that I'm in. Seriously. Do you know for a fact, do you, this is the fact, and it may be off, but I, I think it's not off. God is good. Do you know you can change the mood, the mood that you're in by just changing the color that you have on? Seriously. You, if you change the color of your shirt or your blouse or, or your pants or whatever, you change the outfit, you can change how you think. Seriously, all these things come into play. Come on now. I mean, if you, you, you think about it, the, the things that you put on, why? Oh, uh, you, you get a new piece of clothing. What, what, what happens? Come on. You'll be like, oh, okay. I know I'm looking sharp today. I don't care what nobody, come on now. I don't care nobody say, I feel good. Come on now. But you take an old shirt or a blouse that just came out the uh, dry and it's all wrinkled up, and you ain't got time to iron it, and you put it, come on, you put it on, what's going to happen? You most likely going to cover up with a jacket. Because you don't want nobody to see it. Come on, these, these are little things. These are, these, there's so many things. You're, 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 you can change your attitude, your atmosphere by the people you hang around with. Come from among them and be ye separate. Come on now. How can Christ fellowship with Baal? If you if you with the Lord, you can't eat at the devil's table too. It don't work that way. You become double-minded, you understand what everything that you do. These are the things that the Lord is telling us to do, and I want to finish up here. I want to I want us to look at uh, one more thing. Uh, Romans chapter 10. And Joe, you kind of hit on it earlier. Mm -hmm. I, want to, I, want to, I want us to look at it. And this is something for, you know, a couple of weeks ago we talked about the, the black Israelites. How they say that they are the true Jews. Okay, okay. You can have that. I'll let you have that. You're the true Jews. But let's see what the Bible says about that, okay? But that's not the point I'm trying to make. We're going to read it in a minute. Romans chapter 10, look at verse 9. Now, we can start from verse 1 through 3. And he says here, uh, chapter 10. Brother, my heart desired that in prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Amen. So they wasn't saved, see? They thought they were, but they wasn't. He says, For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. See, this is one of the things we got to submit ourselves to God. Mm -hmm. Amen. We got to submit ourselves. What does that mean, surrender? God, here I am. Do you know your trials and your tribulations help you surrender? Because some of those trials and tribulations, things you're going through, I mean, they scare you. They, you, don't, you don't know what's going to happen. I mean, you'll you be like, what is, what's going on? What did I deserve to do this? You didn't do anything. God is trying to let you know that, look, I got it. You just stop depending on yourself. You know, we, we, we always try to figure out, how is God going to bring us through this? He ain't going to be able to figure it out. Because every time he brings you out, it's like, oh, I didn't see that. You know, he's not going to expose that to you. He just wants us to trust him. That's the whole thing about being trustful. 
Trust in him. Look at verse 8 in Romans 10. Watch this. But West, what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy, watch this, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. I talked about last week briefly about how important it is. Uh, 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 let me finish reading here. Listen. That thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Here's that word again. And shall believe in thy heart. Amen. So what you believe that? You believe in your heart. So that's what you believe that. That God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Watch this. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So they go together. Amen. Amen. See, don't be saying things you don't mean. Amen. How many times you just spoke things you didn't mean it? Your mouth ran ahead of you. Oh, amen. So a lot of folks are saved, but their mouth ain't saved. No. No. You got to bring them on one accord. Because when you mean something, it's going to be first agreeable in your heart. Amen. Amen. And then your mouth can speak it. Amen. amen. They go together. Amen. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Amen. And whenever you're speaking death, you, you'll get death. You speak life, you get life. Watch this. For the scripture says, whoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Now here are ones for uh, uh, those I said earlier about the, the, the Israelites. For there is no difference between Jew and the Greek. <laughs> for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Amen. So what's the big fuss? If you're the true Jews, he said ain't no difference. Amen. But that's a different subject there. But that's when you can tell your friends who come to you and try to say this is that, and we're this, this and that. But the point here, what I'm trying to make is that with the heart man believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. See, we, we already said before in first, uh, 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 Romans, I mean Corinthians chapter 12 verse uh, uh, 3. It says, you can't call Jesus look up by the Holy Ghost. No. Oh. You can't even call him Lord. So, that's the case, meaning that, go, let's go back to the beginning, God is the initiator of salvation. Remember Jesus said to us in that John 6, he says, whoever the Father give me, hallelujah. Amen, amen. amen. Whoever the Father give me, they'll never be lost. They got eternal life. Wow. You know, John 6 Right quick, John 6. Holy Spirit, thank you. I want to show you this, John 6. Even though we talked about this verse, and we said it out loud, it's a spirit that quickened and the flesh profits nothing. Watch this. The words that I speak unto you, they have spirit and they have life. But look at the next verse. But there are some of you that believe not. Oh, amen. Yeah. Come down believing, man. Come down to believing. Remember what we said. To believe something, you've got to have at least two things to choose from. Good and bad. That's what we talk about. This is good. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4, I give you good doctrine. That's what Proverbs 4 says. He gives us good word. He gives us the truth. It's good. It's life. It's the way. Amen. So these are some of the things that we got to understand in order for to activate the spirit that is in us. I'm telling you, Let's get busy, folks. Uh, start feeding in your spirit, Christ. Amen. Uh, uh, you know, we, of course, you got to be born again. We just read that that was a way to be born again, and God is the one who initiates that. And when we when we witness to people, you know, it's it's you don't want to talk about what they've done and how bad they are. Amen. Tell them the goodness of God. Yes. How He has forgiven them. And they too can experience eternal life. Yeah. But it has to come by the way of the word. Because it's something about the word, when the word is presented, it does the change. And it does, it has this miraculous power because it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Yeah. And it goes down to the mouth of the bone. It can, it can attend to the thought and intent of the heart. That's how, just, just put the word out there. I mean, this thing is powerful. Just put it out there. i tell you one thing, it changed my life. Yeah, and guess what? It changed yours. Amen? God bless Amen. you. Amen.